Hi everyone, Daniel from Homegrown in Australia. This is going to be a bit of a long video. Um, it's going to be a bit of a warts and all video. We've got the sun shining, uh, it's the 25th of April, uh, and behind me you can see there's some lovely dark clouds as well, and, and uh, it's a bit representative about of what's going on in my garden. So, you know, um, we've got a new season, time to plant some new things, so it's a new opportunity to get things sorted. But we've also been neglecting things a little bit and uh, there's a few dark patches as well and I thought I'd just share with you before I get in there and clean it all up and get sorted again uh, for the winter growing season I thought I'd just show you a little bit what's going on in the garden and for those of you that feel like you haven't got enough time to grow your own food and grow your own vegetables um, I hear you it takes time it takes effort um, but you know, even when you neglect things, you, you still get food and you still get a bit of a story. So as, as I've done this year, um, working, from, working from home with COVID, I thought I would have had more time on my hands to get things done, but it's also been a bit of a disruptive year for everyone, I'm sure. And um, lots of different things to think about. Certainly in my organisation where I work, uh, we've had to create new ways of working and um, had to think about some new things. So. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of a disruptive and distracting year and um, maybe haven't got done everything I would have loved to have, but still got some really great outcomes out of the garden. Um, in the last couple of weeks, we, you know, we've extracted honey out of the hive, probably late, but uh, better late than never, and the hive's still looking healthy. We've um, uh, bottled up the last of the apple cider, so made two batches of apple cider this year um, off two of the main apple trees. and. Uh, pear cider as well just pretty recently and um, I haven't got much in the way of stuff in the garden now that's edible but um, we'll share with you what's coming on and uh, what's ready to pick as well so I'll uh, flip the camera around and uh, let's, let's have a look at the mess <laughs> cheers well I'm gonna start over here um, this is the fruit the only fruit tree left it really has any fruit that's uh, ready to pick and eat. And, and this is a quince, so this will be the first time. Um, I've got the quinces. I had a few small ones grow last year, for the, but we didn't pick them and left them for the birds. And um, yeah, so we're going to have an attempt at making some quince jelly. So this will be my first time. Uh, we've got some family friends that have given us a recipe that have uh, made it over a long time. and. They've got a couple of recipes. One's really simple. You just throw the quinces in a pot with some sugar and water, boil them up and then just strain them overnight and um, get all the juice to form the jelly. So um, if that works, I'll share the recipe. Um, the, re the recipe had been handed down, I think, um, from um, the person who's my age's grandmother. So uh, it's a really old recipe. So anyway, we'll give that a go. What else is going on in the garden? We lost a couple of, um, we had a couple of rescue chooks and we lost them um, this year. Uh, the two original ones that I had that were um, good healthy, good healthy ones that continue to survive. And the rescue ones didn't do so good. Um, oranges. So all three orange trees have got um, nice green oranges. We'll expect to see them in July and August time frame. So they've been doing well. The lemon trees overdue for a prune, but plenty of lemons. The same with the lemonade tree. Uh, the lime tree down the front has also done pretty well. We've got um, chestnuts, which the birds love and to be honest I haven't really bothered with them uh, but there's literally hundreds of them on the ground and over to our mess so I've pulled out the tomato plants last week apart from some little Tommy toe tomatoes in the front uh, we've pulled them out and um, you can see here the zucchinis have really had it in the, in the sun in the slight you can see the bee down in there, still having a go at pollinating. Um, we're getting little zucchinis on here, but I think I've picked my last big zucchini and this will 
probably make sense to pull out today. Um, the corn I should have pulled out by now, although in the last week I have pulled a couple of corns that probably weren't too good for humans, but fed to the chooks. Down here, we've still got eggplants. And um, I don't know if you can see in there, but there's quite a few eggplants. I imagine they're not gonna grow much now with uh, winter on its way. But we're done all right out of those. And really, apart from the basil, which has started to, sorry if I swung around too fast there, which has started to go to seed. And we let that dry off and collect those seeds for next year. Um, and it's starting to you know, get a little bit spotty and so forth, but it's done really well this year in the vegetable beds. You can see, I just use a sugar cane mulch on the garden beds over summer. This helps protect the soil and keep the weeds down. Although, because I haven't been on top of things, you can see a few weeds in here as well. But I've got a couple of uh, worse stories. <laughs> and um, I'll just share with you. I tried hard to keep this kaiku grass out of the backyard where I have my veggie garden but inevitably it made its way in here and it's just taken off like a rocket. And the reality is there's no stopping it getting in to these beds. And you can see here, this one was trying to get in there. Um, so that's one real problem. If you're into growing your veggie beds, you probably want to keep the cooch and kaiku um, a long way away from where you're growing because once they're in the beds there's no getting it out um, it's not a case of digging the bed over and pulling all the weed out it's it's just hopeless it becomes a full-time job and um, so that's one little bit of advice um, I knew it but I still failed in that respect and so I've got some plans of what I'm going to do with these beds um, over the next couple of years um, where I'll probably turn them into a different form of bed that basically is fully lined and takes water underneath them and um, we'll deal with that a little bit differently but that's a story for another day. The other thing I just want to share that's been a bit of a disaster for me, I need to get the whipper sniffer down here, but I've got some raspberry plants in here but I also planted some passion fruit and you can see here these vines, they're the rootstock of the passion fruit. And my advice would be having had the experience would be to never grow grafted passion fruit. This is like a weed, it comes up all through the grass, um, it comes up in other garden beds, um, there's just no stopping this stuff. And so, grafted passion fruits, um, I wouldn't go there. And having spoken to a couple of nurseries, um, they'd advise the same thing. They uh, would just grow the non-grafted varieties. Um, so you don't get this problem. Um, the other challenge I've got is because I've got bees, I'm really reluctant to use um, herbicides and, and pesticides and um, blackberries along the fence line have been a real problem. I've pulled all these out and they've just come straight back um, over the last eight weeks or so. So um, again, I've got a job there to sort that out and um, basically find a way of trying to keep that out of the picture. Um, you can see here the bed that I had the potatoes in and I've just thrown the trellises on top of this. It's had all sorts of weeds start to grow up. I'm gonna to have to clean this up today, but I've even got uh, a cherry tree suckling growing off the root system. So the cherry tree is quite a distance. We're certainly a long way from the water line at the cherry tree. And so, again, you know, the rootstock of the grafted tree, um, they're just so vigorous. And I constantly get these cherry trees suckling 
just growing out of the roots, um, growing out of the roots everywhere. So again, just something to be aware of, I suppose. Um, they're a little bit more manageable. You know, you get two or three growing around and you pull them out. But um, yeah, they're, they're probably three of the uh, little stories where things just don't quite go to plan and um, they need to be need to be tackled. Um, the other thing I've sort of failed on this year is I really like growing my own seeds and planting my own um, planting my own seedlings. And uh, for winter this year, I, I did did that for summer, but for winter this year, I just got behind and um, left things a bit late. In fact, I lost my greenhouse to to um, to the wind, so didn't get there. So Again, I guess uh, there's more cost, but no shame in <laughs> grabbing some seedlings. It's better than having nothing in the garden. And I paid about uh, $50 for 10 punnets, as opposed to paying maybe uh, probably $10 for a bunch of seeds that last me a couple of seasons. So um, what am I planning now? You can see we've got the iceberg lettuce um, one of the kids picked up some uh, coriander, uh, Vietnamese coriander. So we've got that. Um, doesn't look like coriander, does it? Um, looks more like a mint. Um, picked up some kale. I haven't grown kale for a few years, I don't think. Uh, used to grow it every year. Put in juice and so forth. So um, we've got that. I normally grow an English or Medina spinach and saw this there. So I thought we'd give that a try. It's um, the baby spinach. So that'll be a first. These look like they'll be broccoli. So I've got some broccoli to plant. You never have enough lettuce or variety of lettuce. Goes to the chooks if we. And we've got some cabbage. Uh, you can have too much cabbage. I find it hard to get through the cabbage. <laughs> and um, a slow bolt coriander. So um, growing coriander in springtime, I find it does bolt pretty quickly. This time of the year. Um, it seems to go a little bit better. I would have liked to have had it in before now, but anyway, that's um, that's a bit of an idea of what I'm going to put in the garden for winter, um, along with snow peas, which is always great value. Um, I'll just I just keep my snow peas from year to year, so I've got my own seeds there. So yeah, that's a little bit of what's going on. Um, the only other thing I've really got at the moment is. We're at the very tail end of the little Tommy Toe tomatoes, and I've just been eating a few of them straight from the garden this morning. Um, but other than that, um, that's it. It's time to get the new season stuff in, and um, away we go. Yeah, well, I hope you appreciated the honesty, and you know, if you're struggling with your own garden, hang in there, uh, as, as I have this year, and um, always find time to do things a little bit better each year and, and if that doesn't work out uh, we regroup and on and upwards <laughs> anyway th thanks for watching i know this was a bit of a long video um, if you found the honesty a bit interesting <laughs> give it a thumbs up um, and uh, feel free to subscribe love to have you on board and share with you what's going on in my garden and what i'm doing with the produce uh, as time goes on thanks a lot bye